If you could choose one tactic that you think would be really helpful for people in having fruitful discussions with the people in their lives who are asking some of these more emotionally driven questions uh, within that context of progressive Christianity, what would, what would that tactic be and what would that look like to apply that? Um. Well, there is a tactic called just the facts, ma'am. And the idea is, is to sometimes people hold views that are just simply inconsistent with the facts. When people say, well, there's been more murders and, and crime and killing and bloodshed by religion than any other thing in the world, this is just simply false. It's just factually, it's false. Historically, it's false. 30 million people died in the First World War, and that had nothing to do with religion. 60 to 80 million in the Second World War, it had nothing to do with religion. The amount of secular death in the world absolutely dwarfs the amount of uh, killing and bloodshed done by religion. And I chronicle, chronicle that in detail in the second edition, uh, the 10th anniversary edition. Um, but that principle is one to bring to the table a lot when you're dealing with your progressive friends, because because they they simply got a lot of theological they get a lot of theological things wrong because their head is turned largely by the culture and somewhat by their own emotions. So let me just I'll ro- I won't role play with you. I'll play both parts for the sake of time. But um, uh, say one way of dealing with say the blood atonement, okay, which they think is brutal cosmic child abuse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the, here's the question I would have. I understand your view, and I can understand how. Boy, that would be so offensive to you when you think about it. Let me ask you a question, though. Do you think that God is a God of love? Yes, of course I do. That's why I'm so upset. Do you think Jesus taught love? Was he the one of love? A, a, yes, of course he is. And that's why this whole thing about blood atonement and blood everywhere, that's all wrong. Okay. So if God is a God of love and Jesus is a man of love, then whatever they say is true is going to be consistent with them being loving. Is that a fair thing to say? Now I'm asking a very important procedural question. Because if God and Jesus teach the blood atonement and God and Jesus are loving, then the blood atonement is not unloving. Okay? Penal substitution, blood atonement kind of thing. But I want them to get the piece on the table first. I'm asking these questions, so getting affirmation, I'm putting these pieces on the table. Yes, God is loving. Jesus is loving. So whatever they say is going to be consistent with their character, right? Right. Okay, now let's see what they say about this issue. Because if it turns out that penal substitution is what they taught, And the apostles who were trained by Jesus taught, and by the way, this is important, the apostles in the New Testament, these were, every one of them were trained personally by Jesus, including Paul, okay? And the pillars affirm that in Galatians chapter one or two, Paul talks about that. Okay, so then we go back, as you've done in in, in uh, another gospel, which I'm just putting a plug in. This is a great book, and everybody who's interested in progressive Christianity are, are going to get a very good tutorial on how to deal with your progressive Christian friends. You go through this issue and demonstrate that this is at the core, the blood atonement is the core of the gospel message. First Corinthians 15, I deliver delivered to us first importance, Jesus died for our sins. Huh? There it is. Isaiah 53 quoted by Jesus himself yeah. that, you know, he, 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 he took our stripes on himself, et cetera, et cetera. That's all. So, so now we have a Hebrew prophet speaking for God and Jesus himself and Paul trained by Jesus saying in the text that Jesus died for us to cover our sins, to pay for our sins. And if Jesus says it, then it must be, it can't be unloving. In fact, it's the most loving thing. Greater love has no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friend. So this is where you use the questions to prepare a place for the answer that you're able to give. And as much as possible, even when you navigate through those particulars of the answer, you want to use questions to get affirmation of obviously true things that are going to set up the 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 case that you're making, in this case, for substitutionary atonement. Mm-hmm.